Yes, she will live, Caramon said bitterly. And so will you, won't you, Raceland? I take her through the portal, and you come right after us. Take her. No! Caramon shook his head, though tears glimmered in his eyes, and his face was pale with grief and anguish. He stepped toward his brother. His sword ready, Raceland raised his hand. Caramon couldn't move his sword, hung suspended in the hot, shifting air. Take her. And take this as well. Hello and welcome to all the men and women of the West. I'm Joe. Today's video is going to be about Raceland. This one is going to be an interesting one. It's long been assumed that there's really one primary cause for Raceland's redemption. That Caramon finally got to Raceland and redeemed him. After decades of trying to be the good brother and trying to help Raceland climb out of the pit of depression and anger he fell into after the test. The thing about Raceland is that to understand his redemption, one has to understand his fall. Throughout his life, he was always compared to his brother, Caramon. Raceland is a complex character. He is the same archetype as Feanor from Tolkien's universe. Both characters are essentially the spirit of fire. Both characters, at pretty much all but the end of the world, redeem themselves. They both have a grand fall, and both are incredible anti-heroes. Although Feanor kind of goes further than Raceland to an extent, and actually becomes a villain. Raceland kind of becomes one, but there's always a, a sliver of good in him. This is a character trait that Margaret Weiss masterfully, alongside Tracy Hickman, maintained and were able to always balance. The thing with Raceland's fall is that he was always jealous of his twin brother, Caramon, who was better looking, physically fitter, and generally more popular. This wasn't helped by the fact that, as a child, he was abused by just about everyone, from his magical instructor, to his mom, to Flint, to Kitsiara, to even Sturm to an extent, as Sturm's mother often put Sturm up to bullying Raceland to almost incredible and horrific degrees. That said, the only person who really didn't seem to abuse Raceland seemed to be his father, whom Raceland didn't have too close a relationship with. As a grown man, Raceland would become attached to his friends, such as Tannis, Tass, Flint, Sturm, and the rest. That being said, he was more attached to his ambitions. And this shows that Raceland deep down does crave friendship, does crave love. It would be after the war, though, when he at last achieved physical and emotional independence from Caramon, that Raceland would decide that he doesn't need his brother. But instead, he sought out Trisania, the beautiful, brilliant pupil of Elistan. Trisania is a very special character. She is light where Raceland is dark, but at her core, she's also neutral, just as he is. She's in the gray. There's plenty of things to deride about her. She's arrogant, snobby. She has a short temper, traits that Raceland kind of shares. On the other hand, she genuinely loves him, and Caramon doesn't even register to her, which this is exactly what Raceland has always desired. But the trouble with Raceland is he never believed he was worthy of love, deep down. This is something that his family ingrained in him psychologically. He is an immense abuse victim. And this fall, which occurred mainly in the test when he slew Caramon because he was jealous of his brother, Parsalian, of course, cruelly, per his evil, callous nature, made Caramon watch. So that Raceland, who desperately wanted Caramon not to have seen this one moment of great evil on his part, had to live with the knowledge that, yes, Caramon had seen him at his worst. This broke Raceland. Throughout Dragons of Autumn, Twilight, Winter Night, we see that Raceland is crueler than what he was in Soulforge, for example, or Brothers Magier, or Brothers in Arms. He deep down loves his brother, but he's just so broken and wretched. And there are scenes where he keeps trying to reach out to his friends, where you see the man inside the armor, but he can't break free. This makes Raceland probably the most tragic character in Dragonlance history. No one's more pitiful or pitiable than Raceland Magier. Honestly, he's probably the character I pity the most. This brings us to the redemption. Raceland ends up over the course of the War of the Lance further corrupted by Feast on Dantilus into seeking to become a god. This is a mad ambition. Getting to his redemption, Raceland's redemption can be, I would say, chalked up to three main factors. Yes, there is Caramon, Crisania, of course, but also Raceland himself. And I'm going to compare him to the anime character Hiei, 
from Yu Yu Hakusho. The first factor is Karamon. Karamon, deep down, has always tried to help Raceland. Now, he did eventually get overbearing, and there was a toxic element to the relationship on both sides. Karamon is deep down a good person, but he's a womanizer, a hedonist. The trouble with Karamon is he always treated Raceland a little callously when it comes to women and drink and friends. How many times do the Heroes of the Lance express the desire to kill Raceland? Yet Karamon doesn't stand up for Raceland in that regard. He doesn't stand up really for Raceland. As for women, he slept with women that Raceland liked and that Karamon knew Raceland liked, in particular in Brothers Magier. I know I'm giving Karamon a lot of flack. I really do love the character. I think he's deep down. The trouble is he never gave up on Raceland, deep down. He caused a lot of the damage. He deep down knew it, and he wanted to fix it. But it has to be Raceland who fixes Raceland. This is something both brothers struggled with their entire lives. Karamon, though, did at last reach his brother. But you have the quote from Raceland during Test of the Twins. What do you care what becomes of me? These are some of the last words Raceland says to his brother. He's doing it to get his brother to safety, but there's still something angry there, a rage. And I can't help but think that there's something underlying there. And that Raceland deep down sees it as, on some level, his brother never truly cared about him. He's ultimately trapped by the feeling that Caramon doesn't truly really care about him. He wants him to, but on the other hand, he knows that he's done so much damage to the relationship. Caramon held fast. He held strong. It's only when he finally let go of Raceland that Raceland finally embraces his brother. I can't help but think that there's an element of Raceland kind of appreciating that respect, that he's finally being made to own his decisions and his mistakes. I like that it's only as men that they are able to finally forgive each other and themselves. It's a very beautiful moment, but also a very tragic moment between the brothers. Then you have Krasanya, the woman who loved Raceland unconditionally, in a way that not even Karamon could. This love, this passion for Raceland, is one that you can see throughout the legends he doesn't really get. He doesn't fully understand why she loves him. Krasanya is at first attracted to his IQ because no one's as smart as Raceland in almost all of fantasy fiction. He's clever and wise and intelligent in ways not even Gandalf could be, in ways maybe only Feanor could equal the Silmarillion. Ultimately, it's his IQ, his brilliance, his genius that undoes him. Krasanya, though, doesn't just love him for his mind. She loves him physically. She loves him for the goodness of heart that's there deep down inside of him. And this love for him is something that boggles his mind. You see that in Time of the Twins, War of the Twins, and it's not until the end of Test of the Twins that he finally comes to terms with and realizes and accepts that she does love him. You know, she's the only one for him, and he's the only one for her. It's kind of just that simple in a way. Krasanya, in a lot of ways, did bring out, from the very beginning, the very best out of Raceland. So she never begrudged him a single act of goodness or evil. She forgave it all. She loved it, him for everything. It's finally we have the last reason. Raceland was angry all his life. It's just that simple. In Yu Hakusho, Hiei is the most angry, vengeful character. The very nature of his fiery powers are derived from his hate and his passion. But when he finally lets go of his hate and anger, he's left powerless, as is his love interest and semi-rival, Makoro, whose abilities function much the same. So Raceland's abilities are linked to his hatred. There was a time they probably could have been linked to love or just overall passion, but Parcellian did away with that. When his anger finally left him and he was with nothing but a sense of hollowness, as well as the love he felt for his brother in Crisania, empty of all power, when he at last opened his heart. But at the same time, that's probably the first time since the test that he truly began to live. And maybe that's the lesson we ought to take, that love's just worth it. That it does take risks, it does take compromises, but it's the best journey of them all. And it ultimately saves us from the deepest pits of our own anger and feelings of darkness. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share, and shine your own love upon that subscribe button, like your Chrisania shining her light upon Raceland.